thank you for coming. Um, so this is, as you can see, a lightning talk workshop. In the course of today's session, we'll actually um, have time to write a lightning talk, practice your lightning talk, um, if you want to. I actually have split it up into three different sections, and um, each section gets, uh, let's say, increasingly emotionally difficult. So um, first we'll start with just what and why about a lightning talk, what it is, why you would want to consider giving one. Um, in the second part, which is about an hour, we'll actually write one, and there'll be time for that. And then we'll have a little break. And then in the third part, we'll get together in partners and go to the corners of the room and actually practice giving the lightning talk that we've written. So, um, if at any point you feel like you've had enough of the putting yourself out there part, uh, don't feel bad if you want to go and take a break, not you know, practice here and now, you can practice later. Um, but I want to make sure that there is that opportunity for you so that by the time you get to the end, you will have written and practiced a lightning talk and hopefully feel a little bit more comfortable doing one in your own, in, in, in this community or in a community that you go back to after the conference. So uh, this is part one, what and why, uh, what is a lightning talk and why would you want to get that? So a lightning talk uh, is a five minute presentation, it's over before you know it, which is why it's called a lightning talk. Um, they're informal, they're fun, um, you can really let loose, you can try different things out. Um, generally, people give you the way, way benefit of the doubt when you're doing a lightning talk. So, you get up there and it's totally, which has happened to anyone that's really ever given one, don't feel bad because it's kind of part of what they're for. Um, they're community oriented, so at a, at a conference where you know only 60 people can talk, but maybe a thousand people are coming, lightning talks are a place where the community can say, well, I'm not going to get full talk, but I want to come and make my voice heard for five minutes about something. And they're very common at uh, open source and tech events. So as you get involved in the tech scene, the open source scene, um, knowing how to do a lightning talk and being able to get up and give one helps you to get involved with the community. Um, and it's very little commitment. It's five minutes. And if it turns out terribly, it's totally fine. OK, so why would you want to give one? There's uh, obviously a million different reasons, but the ones that I find most compelling, um, first of all, to share your perspective. Nobody sees the world the way you do. So if you can get up on stage and share something for five minutes, you can really add your voice to the community. Um, it also gives the opportunity for everybody else to find out who you are and what you're about. So it can help you find your group within the larger group. Um, you may want to ask for something. If you're working on a project, um, you might want to ask for help. If you're stuck on uh, an issue that you're trying to work through or a bug that you can't figure out, you can get the word out and someone might know the answer to that. They can help you out. If you are working on a project and you want people to try it out, you need some beta testers, or maybe you're organizing an event and you want people to come, it's a great way to get the word out super quickly, obviously five minutes or less. Um, it's also a good opportunity to practice speaking. So a lightning talk can be a great way, if you've never done a talk before, to say, okay, well, I don't really know if I want to do this, but let me try it out for five minutes on the stage, and if it's horrible, at least it's short. Um, and finally, they can be funny. So maybe you just want to, you know, share. It, it depends on the venue, but maybe you just want to share uh, an anecdote that happened that the community might be interested in, or um, you know, tell some jokes. No one will pull you off stage, really, um, unless you go over five minutes. So <laughs> you get a lot of leeway. Obviously, you don't want to be uh, rude or or whatever. But um, if you watch some lightning talks, and uh, the conferences are all. Um, being taped these days, and the lightning talks will be too. So you can go through, you know, whatever is your community of choice, and find their lightning talks from past conferences, and just watch them. They're hilarious, and you'll learn a lot. Okay, so for prepping for a lightning talk, um, first thing you have to think about is the audience. Who is it that you're speaking to, and what would be something they would want to hear about, or that you would want to share with them, um, and then. When you are giving your talk and planning your talk, remember what your goal is. So did you want to get up there just to practice speaking? Well, you already achieved it just by getting up there, right? But if you want to ask for something, you've got to make sure that you put that very clearly in your presentation, what you're asking for, and how the audience can give that thing to you. Do they need to contact you? Do they need your email address? Do they need to know when your event is? 
Um, it's five minutes or less. Well, I guess in some groups they might give you more time or less time than that. They'll tell you how long it is. Um, but definitely find out whether or not you get the hook because some places are very strict about five minutes and in five minutes you get the hook. So you want to make sure you comment under that. Um, other places are a little bit, um, give you a little bit more leeway. But finally, don't overthink a lightning talk. Lightning talks are um, supposed to be off the cuff and very, very um, flexible and casual. So um, put yourself out there, have fun with it, and it will be great and then it will be over. <laughs> <laughs> so some pitfalls to watch out for when you're doing a lightning talk. Um, Murphy's Law, number one, of course, for any talk. If it can go wrong, it will. And the, um, the biggest place this comes up is when you do a lightning talk and you try to give a live demo. So you'll be like, oh, let me, I'm just going like, to show you how it works. And as soon as you get up there, the internet doesn't work, or the thing doesn't load, or someone's pushed some changes to the code base and it, doesn't, it actually doesn't work right now for this five minutes that you have to be on stage. So um, when you're considering doing something that has some moving parts, try to make a backup. Um, for example, with this talk, you know, it, it's on iCloud. I have it saved in it. Cloud somewhere, so I put it on a, a USB drive because I thought, you know, the internet could be out when I get here, and I still want to give this talk. So, um, any backups you can do, great idea. Um, second pitfall: five minutes is actually a lot less time than you think when you're up behind the lights or in front of the lights. So, um, remember that when you're when you're preparing for the talk, you'll think, oh, I can sail this in five minutes, and then it's actually twenty. <laughs> so, um, keep that in mind. Butterflies, obviously, nervousness will be a little bit of a, a challenge for anyone, really, giving, well, almost anyone. There are people, I, I think, that say they're not nervous when they give talks, but I mean, I don't know, I haven't met very many people like that. It's totally normal to be nervous. And when you're up there and you feel the butterflies coming and you're really, really nervous, just stop, close your eyes, take a breath, in your eyes, it only takes like eight seconds to do that. You'll have you know, four minutes and, and 52 seconds left. Um, and then finally, uh, pitfall is not having a call to action. So you want to make sure if there's something that you want out of it or something that you would like people to do after hearing your talk, make it very clear to the audience, um, this is my project. Okay, thank you so much for hearing my talk. Please go to my website, download the demo, and leave your email address for our newsletter. So they know exactly what it is you want them to do, and if you give them all the information, then they can go and do it. Okay, so I would like to share an example of lightning talk from PyCon US last year. It's a great talk um, by Philip Kwechek, and he's a Python community member, he's an open source contributor, and he's the organizer of the PyCon in Poland, which is PyCon PL. Um, so he's doing a lightning talk at, at PyCon last year to tell people about PyCon PL, which is coming up, and he wants people to come. So he's the organizer. Okay, here we go. Our next talk in the quest for Python world domination. PyCon will extend to Poland. Philip Kaczyk of PyCon Poland. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, so. Um, I am Filip Kłemczyk, that's my email, that's my Twitter handle, and I will talk about PyCon PL. Um, by the way, it's my first lightning talk in English, uh, but I think uh, that it will be awesome. Okay, I'm coming from Poland. Um, Poland is a country in Central Europe, so it's not so far away from the United States, believe me. <laughs> um, some common myths say that we have birds on streets, but actually this uh, photo was taken in the United States. Why <laughs> <laughs> one is a cool place uh, this year? So, first of all, there's a PyCon PL 6 edition, and of course JangoCon Europe Circus edition. Uh, I will talk about PyCon PL because I'm the main organizer. So, it will be in October, it will last for four days, it will be done, uh, in a, uh, organized in a hotel that is situated in mountains. Um, what kind of uh, activities will be there? So talks, trainings, tutorial, lightning talks. And as far as languages are concerned, uh, we are also looking for English speaker, uh, speakers. Last year we had about 50% uh, of talks in English, so we are looking forward to uh, make this uh, number even bigger this year. 
uh, website uh, isn't ready for, for this year's edition, uh, but you can follow us on Twitter and uh, there will be an announcement when the call for papers will run. Uh, if you ever visit Poland, there are a lot of local meetups and uh, as far as I observe, uh, new ones are coming. Um, how is PyCon PL like? So, very short trip from the first edition to the current one. Um, I will show you some photos uh, so you'll have an idea how it looks. So, it was the first edition. We had uh, above 100 attendees on the first edition. Uh, then we decided that we change the formula and move to a single hotel. So all attendees are in a single hotel that is usually in the middle of nowhere. So after the talks, everyone stays in hotel and the socializing and networking continues for the whole night till morning. So it's a good thing. Uh, we always choose a venue that is close to nature if someone feels to, uh, to, to go and rest. Uh, we had a, a very interesting speakers during all the years. You probably will recall some of the faces. We also have musicians programming Python. Um, probably you know Brandon from yesterday's talks. Uh, we do open air light, uh, lighting talks kind of interesting thing uh, during barbecue. Um, another well-known person, another uh, Python gurus. Uh, the number of people uh, keeps increasing every year, so we will probably exceed 200 uh, this year. So, um, uh, on the previous edition we had a cake because we uh, already finished five years. So we are kind of uh, nature <laughs> uh, PyCon conference. Okay, uh, I was also I wanted to use the remaining time to tell about the project that is done by my friend that couldn't uh, reach this conference because he was actually handing over his master thesis. So it's very interesting but, uh, but, um, service, gpoder.net. It's a web service to manage your podcast subscriptions and it's based on Django uh, and uh, CouchDB NoSQL database it is used. Uh, it's whole open source so you can join the project, contribute. Uh, there are also a lot of desktop and mobile clients that work with this service. Some of them run on Python uh, using PyGTK or PySite. This is how it generally looks, so you can uh, check it yourself by going to gpoder.net. Uh, you can use the sign, you can see the source code, and you can follow on Twitter developers. So, my talk is probably over. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> So um, I love that example of a lightning talk. There are so many things Philip did that were awesome in this lightning talk. First of all, I don't know if you noticed, it was exactly five minutes. It was like three seconds short of being exactly a five minute video. <laughs> um, and I thought it was so cool how he was like, well, I'm going to use four minutes to tell you about Python PL. But I'm going to squeeze in my friend's project because he couldn't make it one minute at the end. Um, just kind of goes to show how flexible a lightning talk can be, and nobody thought twice about that. Oh, he's talking about, oh, now he's talking about this thing. All right, cool, let's hear about that thing. Um, but these are his big wins, I think, for this lightning talk. So he contributed to PyCon US uh, 2013. I, I can't remember if he was also doing another talk, but even without anything else, by showing up and doing this lightning talk, he contributed a lot to the community, and it's still contributing. So here we are watching it as an example. Um, he entertained the audience, it was very funny. Uh, he seemed like he was having fun. He promoted his event in Poland. Um, he practiced presenting, and he practiced presenting in non-native language, which was awesome. Um, he shared his friend's project, and it was exactly five minutes. So in, in five short minutes, just by getting up there, he achieved all these different goals. Um, and I just love it, I thought it was awesome. So what I was hoping that would do is give you a sense of how many different things you can achieve, and even, even if you only achieved one of those goals with your life and talk, and you got up there and did it, and everyone would clap, and then it would be done, and you'd be on your way, you know, 
to your next goal, achieving your next thing. So today, I would like all of us to write our own, maybe your first, may not be your first thinking talk, um, but we'll do it together. So um, we'll do it over the next hour. Okay, so the first section, we'll have three minutes, and if you um, get your computer out, it'll be easiest if you're typing. If you have a notebook, that's fine too. Um, but the first thing we we'll want to do is brainstorm topics. So think about what is something you could spend five minutes talking about right now. You don't have to do any research. You don't have to look anywhere for information. Just stuff that you know about that's in your head. Five minutes. Um, and you'll want to think about who you're going to be talking to. So if you have an audience in mind, you can use that audience. If you don't, think about your fellow attendees at Open Source Bridge as your audience. So. Um, for, for the purposes of this workshop, let me give you some examples of some topics that might be interesting. So you might talk about a project you're working on. You might talk about an organization that you volunteer for. You might want to get other people to come and volunteer with you. Um, you could talk about a book that you read recently. Maybe share why you thought it was good or why you thought it wasn't so good. Um, you could even share light and talk about why everyone should own a pet. Maybe you have a cat, you love your cat, your cat really changes your life. You might want to share with other people so that they can consider getting a cat. So we're going to have uh, three minutes for you to brainstorm a list. things you could spend five minutes talking about. Um, pick one. And what we're going to do for the next 10 minutes is just expand on this idea. So 
just thinking about this topic, write down everything you can think of about the topic, um, points with all sorts of supporting material that you can think of about it, um, and the details you would share when you give the talk. Oh, uh, some examples. In a book, you're writing about a book. I'll start over. You're, say your topic is a book to write. You can't share the whole book, but think about the main important points. Um, and if you're talking about your project, what details about your project are going to be most compelling to your audience? Okay.
So the next uh, step in my lightning talk process is to take all the things we've written about what we want to talk about in our talk, and I'm going to think about what is the goal? What is it that we want the audience to walk away with after they hear the talk? So with that goal in mind, look at all the points you've written and all the things you have in mind that you could say about this topic. And remember, you only have five minutes. And in that five minutes, you're going to tell a story to the audience that will hopefully compel them to do or walk away with whatever you want them to walk away with. So um, look at all your details. And in this step, make an outline, putting the things that you want to say in the order that you want to say them. And really start to think about um, how you're going to achieve your goal for the talk.
Okay, so how's everyone feeling so far about the process? Did anyone have any questions, run into any stumbling blocks? No, okay. So the next step in this process, because of my is to make sure that you include a very clear call to the audience about what you want them to do. We call this a call to action. So it may not make sense for your talk, but there may be something that you would like them to do. Maybe the thing you would like them to do is go to a website and check it out. Maybe you're telling them about your blog and you'd like them to read your most recent post about X, Y, or Z. So what will the audience need to know to take the action you'd like them to take after they hear your talk? Do they need your email address? Do they need to know the URL of your blog? Do they need to know where your event is happening or um, what the help is that you need that you're asking for? Make sure that you tell them exactly what they need to know and exactly what you would like them to do with that information and figure out where in your talk is a good place to put it. So usually there'll, there'll be somewhere that you put it and then you'll probably repeat it at the end. Um, so if you're volunteering and you're telling someone about the opportunity, let them know how they can help and how they can get involved. Okay, so three minutes for that.
any questions on the call to action stuff? It can be a little tricky sometimes. I went through a yoga teacher training recently. One thing we had to practice a lot was something called command voice. So when you're teaching someone yoga, you can't say like, it would be nice if we all could lift our arms up now. You just say, lift your arms up. Because <laughs> that's what people expect. Um, and it can be a little bit difficult to just say, go to my website and read my blog post because it feels very demanding. But um, when people are looking to you to give them information, they actually, it's, it's very comforting to hear it like that. So um, don't be afraid with your call to action to be very clear about what you want them to do and how they can do this thing. Okay, so the next step is the big step. Um, and this is where we are going to write the script for the talk. So you don't actually have to write it out word for word if you don't want to, but if you've never given a talk before, it can be really helpful in helping you to gauge how long the talk is going to be. So a five minute talk is going to be about 650 words written. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of words, and actually it's not. Um, so if you write out a script and it's 1,200 words long, you can guess that that's going to be about 10 minutes. Um, so if you would like to write a script, that is sort of the time we have here. Um, remember, remember to include your call to action at least once. Um, have fun. Five minute talk, lightning talk, super fun. Um, and if you uh, don't want to write a script, sometimes what I do is just write bullet points. And if you have a certain way that you want to say something, you can write out little quotes for yourself to remember. Um, you can go up there with note cards if that helps you when you're presenting. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, you don't have to memorize it. You're going to write a script, but it's not to memorize. It's just to give you an idea and for you to visualize yourself saying these things. It's all in you already. That's why we started with something that you already know. So um, it's 25 minutes. Feel free to take a stretch break. We'll open the door and you can you know, stretch your legs if you need to. Um, and then we'll come back at um, about 11.15 or 11.20 to start. Oh, and if you have any questions, I'm here. If you need me. Even if it's just you don't know how to say something in your own talk. Okay. Um, are we going to talk about slides or images at all? Um, we are not. Okay. Yeah, um, because sometimes with the light talk, it's just so off the cuff. Don't have slides. Uh, this will come later, but a lot of times it will tell you one slide that has the, the call to action information on it, so your name and then whatever they need to do the thing on there the whole time that you're talking.
Right, that was 25 minutes. Um, 
We have a few minutes before we're going to start practice at 1120. So you can finish up your thoughts if you're still writing. You can stretch your legs for two minutes if you like. And we're going to also be finding a partner shortly. So um, two more minutes. Sorry, I know writing the script, I've actually done this talk a few times, and every time I extend the time, mm -hmm. um, it, it's a step that doesn't really need to be completed. Wherever you are at this point is a good place where you can use what you have to practice. Um, a question I get a lot is, um, how are we going to make slides? So slides are great. Um, if you have time to make them. In a lightning talk, sometimes you'll be in an event and you won't know there's lightning talks and you have 20 minutes until the lightning talk starts and you really want to use one. Um, slides are totally optional when you're giving a lightning talk. They're that quick and flexible and off the cuff. But um, usually if you have time to just make one slide and it has your name and the topic you're talking about and whatever information the audience needs to take your action that you want them to take, that can be up during your whole talk. So you can even put that up in a text editor. Just your name, your email address, whatever they need to know. Um, if you have time to make slides, once you've written the script and you know exactly what you're going to say, that's a great time to make slides that will add to what you already know you're going to say. OK, so this is part three. This is the part where we practice with a partner. So if you're not feeling up to practicing today, that's totally fine. If you are feeling up to practicing today, we have uh, 20 minutes built in right now, 10 minutes for each partner to give your five minute talk and get feedback from someone who has also just gone through the same process. So, um, the job of partner one is to give their talk. Include your call to action, share the information you want to share. The job of partner two is, number one, to time the person. You don't have to make them stop, but let them know when five minutes has gone by. So um, you, know, you can use this clock, you can use your phone timer. Um, job number two is to repeat their call to action back to them. 
So the call to action as you hear it, repeat it back to partner one so that they can hear what the audience has heard as part of their call to action. So whatever it is you think they ask you to do, repeat it back to them. After job or during? After. Yeah, after. So, so you'll want to take notes. Um, third job of partner two is to ask questions and give constructive feedback. So listen to it like it's a real talk. And like if it's about a book, and you're like, oh, wow. Well, I was really curious, actually, what happened to this guy after the story that he told. Or, oh, you're telling me about how to volunteer at the Humane Society. I would really love to know what, how long I would need to volunteer if I wanted to take a shift. Or whatever you actually want to know, let them know. And then partner one, you can write these things down and use it to make your talk better. And after 10 minutes, we'll switch, and the jobs will switch and we'll move forward to the other person. So, um, you can find a corner of this room, you can go out into the hallway. It sounds like it might be a little bit noisy out there, um, but it'll, it'll get a little bit fun in here. You can move around to the corners um, and just talk in a low voice, but you know, pay attention to each other, remember to time each other. Time each other, repeat the call to action, ask questions, and get constructive. 